now a deep puzzle that our VAR will be able to, uh, to, to uh, solve for us very quickly. What happens if you just run returns on past returns? I've done it. Coefficient's about 0.1. And just for fun, I show you the impulse response function. Uh, what if there's a, a shock, a unit shock to returns today, 0.1 the next day, and then 0.1 to the J. Here's the cumulative impulse response function. 0.1 is a very small autocorrelation. On their own, returns look very much like a pure random walk. And similarly, I showed you an asset pricing. If we look at the variance of long run returns, that scales just about linearly with the horizon. So taken on their own, uh, the aggregate stock market looks very much uh, like a random walk. Stocks do not seem to be safer in the long run. There doesn't seem to be a mean reverting component. Now that's a big puzzle, because once you saw the vector auto regression, you might say to yourself, well, here's two components. There's a random walk component. There's a purely transitory component. If I kind of mix and match uh, in response to a shock, surely prices must come back halfway, right? There's a component where it comes back all the way, where it doesn't do anything, a component where it comes back all the way, mix them together, comes back halfway. You would think there would be some, some mean reversion left uh, if you're just looking at a shock to prices when you don't know what happened to dividends. But that seems not to be the case. Um, how can that possibly be? How can it be, in fact, that there is uh, predictability from dividend yields a completely temporary component in the multivariate representation, but nearly a random walk on their own. Stocks are not at all uh, safer in the long run. Well, this is a good moment to meditate on information sets. Uh, the, the agent's information set, lots of uh, variables in a VAR, dividend yields in the VAR, or just returns in the VAR, and the idea of finding the conditioning down, the univariate, in this case, implications of a, a vector autoregression. And we can work that out. Our VAR lets us work that out. And in fact, it turns out it's, it is true that stocks are almost exactly a random walk. If you see a price movement and don't know what happened to dividends, your best guess is that it's permanent. Even though if you saw dividends, you could tell whether it was permanent or, or transitory. Now, uh, let me offer two ways to say that. The, the first is a, a story, temperature forecasting story. Um, it's quite possible that the weather forecaster can forecast the weather one day in advance because he, he can see the models. But if all you have is the sequence of temperatures, the sequence of temperatures is IID and unforecastable, right? So it's perfectly possible that the temperatures alone look like a random walk, but the for weather forecaster, the dividend yield, can know about them one period in advance. Well, let's get past stories and, and, and do actual, uh, actual analysis. What is the univariate return forecast implied by the VAR? Is there a tension or are these things consistent? How do we do that? Well, there's the one period return, right? That's what our VAR tells us about the one period return. The two period return, I just substituted in where tomorrow's dividend yield goes, right? So that's the one period return and the two period return. And now I can work out what is the autocorrelation of returns. Do returns have some negative autocorrelation induced by dividend yield forecasts or not? Well, this is just a little bit of algebra. What is it? RT plus 1, that's my RT plus 1. That's the first equation. My RT plus 2, that is simply this thing here. So what I have to do is work out the correlation, the covariance between those two terms. What is it? Well, DP and DP. That gives us a BR squared times phi dp. So those two terms there multiply to here. Uh, the epsilon, epsilon on R and epsilon dp, that term uh, is a covariance term. But as we saw, uh, the, epsilon, uh, the epsilon t plus 1 and t plus 2, those are shocks at different periods of time. So those are not correlated with each other. So all we have to pay attention to is these two terms here. Now, there's screaming intuition. Every formula here is screaming intuition. The first one is a positive term. It says there's positive autocorrelation in returns. Why is that? Well, it says the dividend yield, when the dividend yield is high, we get high expected returns today, and we get high expected returns tomorrow, and high expected returns the next day. A slow moving forecast variable introduces positive autocorrelation. Uh, when it's winter in Chicago, it's cold day after day. When it's summer in Chicago, it's cold day after day. That's that term, and that gives you a high positive covariance of returns. But this one, this covariance of return and dividend yield shocks is negative. If there's a big positive, if there's a, a big positive spike to dividend yield, that's because prices went down uh, typically and therefore returns went down. So that's a big negative number. That's a big positive number. 
and the intuition is those two things are almost exactly offset. I proved this algebraically in the notes. There's a nice result. If rho equals phi, uh, then in fact the covariance is exactly zero. So uh, the, the VAR is, and the identities are nice because they can swiftly make sense of, of these kind of puzzles for us. The bottom line is predictability from dividend yields, a fully transitory component of prices, doesn't mean stocks are any safer in the long run. Their, vo their volatility rises with horizon. Stocks taken on their own uh, are, are look like a random walk. Now, don't jump to, to long-run investment decisions. The safer in the long run is taken to mean that long-horizon investors should invest more in stocks. That may well be true. But now that we know stocks aren't IID, you shouldn't be using simple IID formulas. It, what, it, what it does is that the dividend yield becomes a Merton state variable, and so the stocks are, are part of long-run portfolios because of a hedging demand, not because their stocks are, are safer in the long run. We'll see that when we come back to portfolio theory. What's nice here is reconciling these two apparently very diverging views of the world. Mm -hmm.